This program made possible by the following. Welcome to this edition of Partners for Community Living. I'm Judy Lazier and I'm very pleased to be your moderator for this session of our program. What do you think it would mean to America in general and to all of us in the Miami Valley if our nation could save $90 billion a year? And that's not 90 million, that's 90 billion. And what if we could save that 90 billion in 2013 and then we could save another 90 billion in 2014 and 2015 and on and on into the future. Then let's think about what it means to 50 million Americans in our country today, many of them here in our own community, who will go to bed this evening without enough food, who will wake up in the morning hungry. 50 million Americans every day dealing with the effects of hunger. More, 16 and a half million of those children. One million of those are senior citizens. Veterans in our country are more than twice as likely to need food and are unable to have the food that they need to keep themselves healthy. Now imagine somewhere tomorrow morning that a baby is born in our community, a baby whose mother did not have the correct nutrition enough nutrition for herself, let alone the growing baby. And that baby may be born with a cognitive impairment or with anemia or with uh, other effects of malnutrition. Imagine a little boy or girl getting ready for the kindergarten or the first grade and there's no breakfast. And imagine them going home at night and there's no dinner on the dinner table. Imagine the impact not only on that child and not only on his or her classmates, not only on the teacher, not only on the mother and father, but to all of us in our community, to all of us in our nation. $90 billion a year. That's the financial impact of hunger in what is supposed to be the wealthiest country <laughs> on earth. We can't do much to solve the problems at the national level at this time. But we are asking you to join us for the next few minutes and to spend that time with us in finding out what we can do about it right here for the children that will get up and go to school in our schools, uh, for the young teenagers who may be out looking for a job but who don't, do not have the stamina to even go out and fill out an application because their, their bellies are empty. Um, very pleased and very honored that uh, we are going to uh, be talking with representatives of the Food Bank and also a representative of the Hope, uh, Hope Foundation. I'm going to introduce our panel and then we're going to start talking about what hunger looks like and what hunger feels like in the Miami Valley because that's where we can make a difference. And I'm very pleased sit, seated next to me is Michelle L. Riley who is the CEO of the Food Bank Incorporated. So we you. want to make sure we get the incorporated there. Right across from me is Rosemary Dannon, who is the Community Relations Director for the Food Bank Incorporated. 
And then we have Scott Sliver, who is the executive director of the Hope Foundation. And I think what I'd like to do is start out, and we'll, we'll start out with, since we have this CEO, it's always good to start with a CEO. Can you give us you. Um, a, an overview or a description of what the food bank is, how long, maybe a little bit of the history, how long has the food bank been in operation in the Miami Valley? Sure, I'd, I'd be happy to, thanks for asking. So our mission is to acquire and distribute food. We have a member agency, 85 member agencies that get food from us. Um, we serve Montgomery County, Preble, and Greene Counties. And in those three areas, the reported food insecurity is about 132,000. 40,000 of those are children. And uh, do you ha have numbers on approximately how, by pounds or um, any other measurement? I do. How much food you distribute on <coughs> an I annual do. basis? I do. Thank you for asking. Last year we <laughs> distributed 5.7 million pounds of food and we'll be well over 6 million this year. Um, I think that, you know, in America the statistics that you are giving, one in every six uh, Americans report food insecurity. Uh, to put that in perspective, we're the 11th, Ohio uh, ranks 11 in high food insecurity. Uh, so it's a, those are substantial numbers. We have 12 food banks in Ohio. We are one of a 12 food bank network. And Rosemary, can you, as community relations director, you work a lot, to, obviously, with the community. Uh, do you have uh, any information about uh, the, the rate of hunger, and you, food insecurity, and that, that was a new term I lear uh, learned, but uh, certainly, Maybe tell us what, how, how you see that term, food insecurity, and um, who are the people that are food insecure or hungry in the Miami Valley? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we looked at the national statistics about children and elderly and all, but who are they here in our community? I think most people would be surprised to learn that people who are food insecure, meaning that they don't have enough food, nutritious food, to keep themselves or their families healthy throughout the month. Um, it could be anybody. It could be your neighbor, your friend. A uh, family member. Um, it, it has no bounds as far as zip code. Um, and as Michelle said, in our service area of Montgomery, Green, and Preble County, there are 132,000 individuals who are food insecure. Um, so it crosses all um, education levels, all economic levels as well, too. And um, how, how do people find out about the food bank, or do they, do they have to have applications or how is the food distributed to people that are in need? We have a network of 85 different member agencies and the Hope Foundation is one of those agencies. And if a person is food insecure and in need of food, um, they can call the United Way's help link. We are a United Way member agency. They can call the help link at 225-3000 or 211 on a landline and they can get um, information on their nearest food, food pantry. And is that done in a in, in a, a way that is not meant to be as embarrassing and you know to, to the person I, I can imagine that some people especially if that's something <coughs> new for them and all it must be very difficult it is to, it, to make that step to say I need I need this help it is very difficult some of our member agencies you know they see people every day who have never had to rely on a food pantry before and they are very sensitive to um, to their needs and Rosemary talked to Scott, let's go to you, and she talked about the, the member agencies, and that's something I wasn't uh, really very aware of, so maybe by telling us about the Hope Foundation, uh, we could uh, find a little bit more about how the partnerships, and since Partners for Community Living is interested in partnerships, we're, we're interested in this one as well. Yeah. So tell us about the Hope Foundation and then how you interact with the food bank. Well, I'll start by saying uh, I'm here representing the 85 member agencies. Uh, we couldn't do what we do without the food bank. Uh, we just wouldn't have enough resources. And so what we do, what we're really good at, is getting the food out to people. Uh, we go to many locations across the Miami Valley. We go to Fairborn, we go to Huber Heights. We're actually in the city of Dayton. We have a, a pantry that's Monday through Friday in Beaver Creek. And as you were talking about, people coming in for the first time, it's not unusual for someone to walk through the door and just break down into tears because they've never had to do it before. There's a perception in the community that this is a perpetual problem, that people are raised in the system and they stay in the system. You know, that may be true to an extent, but I had friends that made really good incomes. You know, you have a two-family 
income, uh, somebody loses a job, got kids in college, a couple of car payments, you know, and they show up and they're in need of food. And, you know, what do you do? You, you help them. Our job is to help them maintain their dignity. And not to ask how it happened or why it happened, but to take care of the immediate needs. Yeah, family. you know, people are, are pretty quick to tell us their story, you know, because they're embarrassed. And they come in and they just, they don't know the system. They're like, what do I need to do this? And our job is just to put them at ease, make them feel comfortable, to not, uh, well, to help ease their embarrassment and to make the process as painless as possible. So who and what are the member agencies? Are they like the local churches or how, how do you become yeah, a member Yeah, well, with agency? the Hope Foundation, we partner with lots of different churches and organizations. Um, we're all volunteers uh, in what we do. Uh, we have we have volunteers who sort of prep everything. We bag the groceries and then we take them out um, to different locations on Saturday mornings. We go to Cedarville and to Jamestown, and there are churches that don't have the resources. And so what we do is we will resource them. Um, I love calling somebody and saying, "Hey, I heard you have a pantry, and we'd like to resource what you're doing." And they just kind of look like, "Are you serious? You you just want to help us?" Well, the, if the idea really is to get food out to hungry people, you know, we're not, uh, we don't get too hung up on, um, you know, who they are, uh, how people are going to find out about it, because word will spread. It, you know, if Rosemary needs food, Rosemary will call her neighbor that she knows is in need who will tell her cousin, and the word gets around. And it, it really isn't hard. You know, if you show up with food and you do it on a regular basis, people will spread the word themselves. Do you see um, in this community the, the rate uh, very similar to the national? Uh, do you see senior, se very many se senior and elderly people who need to rely on? We do, and in fact, the food bank um, this year, a new initiative is our mobile food pantry. And twice a week, we are taking, uh, actually four times a week, uh, we are taking food on a truck out to low-income senior housing complexes uh, to, uh, to distribute food. The ones that we're most concerned about, the most vulnerable, would be senior citizens and then the children. We send out a week 950 uh, backpacks. They go to children who have been identified as otherwise uh, not having food on the weekend. Everything can be opened by the child and eaten without having to warm it up. We prefer that they be able to, but it's sent home with them. And the schools themselves identify. So there's 950 book bags that go out a week. Uh, that in the mobile uh, pantry center, we try to take them specifically to senior citizen centers because a lot of times they're immobile and can't get out. And so if we bring the food to them, if we bring the food to them, then it just makes it easier. And if you're embarrassed, because you're a senior citizen and you can't afford nutritious foods. We try to bring a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. You might not want to go to the job center to fill out paperwork on, uh, you know, all the paperwork that needs to be done, but you might walk down with your neighbor and get some fresh bananas and a bag of potatoes and apples. I think that's one of the things that would really <coughs> not be positive for people to have to, to go through that routine of being in applications and processes and things. So. Uh, talk a little bit more about, uh, I, I just think the backpack idea is so, so remarkable and it's like, why shouldn't we have been doing this for a long, but um, how does that really impact if, if you have the child and, and you send the food home for them and then you have the rest of the family at home? without the food. I mean. Well, that's true, and they're two separate programs. So actually, the food bank, maybe we should talk a little bit about that. So we help uh, get food to pantries. We serve uh, congregate meal centers like the House of Bread, someone who would hold a meal that would serve several people, uh, shelters, and then kids' cafe after school programs, summer feeding programs, and then this backpack program. And the, the, the goal is that no one falls through the crack. A lot of times when parents, um, you know, they've, in the public school system, if they qualify for free and reduced uh, lunches, that doesn't mean that they don't have food on the weekend. We are looking for specific children who the school has identified uh, that need the help on the weekends, that extra help. And I, I know you're not a professional nutritionist, any of you or anything, but uh, just how critical, especially for the children, that they, that they have nutritious food and all as they're going to school. I mean, I imagine if, you're, if your belly is growling and you're hungry, mm -hmm. 
Is, is there anything else you can think of? How can you learn? Right, and it's those early years that are most important because the early years construct the brain architecture. And so that's really why we try to get uh, food into the young, you know, to the youngest uh, people. So they're, they're the most vulnerable. And, and I think the important, one of the important things I hear you saying is nutritious food. Mm -hmm. That's a big change at yes. this point. <laughs> <Nutrition, laughs> not just any food. That's right. But uh, nutritious food because sometimes the easiest food to purchase are those things that are not so mm -hmm. nutritious for you. And um, how is, is there a way people can participate in the backpack project or anything? Well, or there is. And maybe we should talk just a minute about how we get food. So there's okay. five streams of food. There, we get good. the national office um, uh, provides the USDA and TFAP. Then we have local merchants we pick up every day. We, I, I always hesitate to name them because I'm always afraid, but our big ones are Sam's Club, Walmart, Kroger's, Targets. We have trucks on the, on the ground that, that, del that pick up and deliver there every day. Um, so, and then we have a very strong state association. And through the state association, I have two types of ways I can get food. Shelf-stable food, uh, cans that is given through a grant. And then the second is nutritious food, which is um, fresh fruits and vegetables. And last year, uh, our grant was for $326,000, and that translated to about 1.2 million pounds of food. And the good part about that is the money came from the state. Uh, Governor Kasich was very generous. It came from the state. It's delivered through our state association, but it goes back in the hands of farmers in Ohio. So we don't go outside of Ohio to purchase our food, which is very helpful to everyone in the economy. And so the uh, people can, can just donate to the backpack program, or they can do, do, well, I'll, well, we'll talk a little bit about the barrels, because mm -hmm. we have personal experience with the barrels, but uh, can they sponsor a child or a backpack, or? So that is, so backpacks normally, ch we, for us to put them together to get wholesale, it's about $2.88, except for once a month we put peanut butter, which is the protein, and you ask about families, and quite often we know the peanut butter go home, goes home and the whole family eats it, and, and that's okay with us. Uh, but those then run about $4.84. So when you send in, we are always very uh, careful to tell people um, when they send in money for a backpack or they send in for money for food and they want it to be specific for that, all they have to do is write that on the check. It goes straight into the food account. Not a penny goes to operations or programming. So if they want to give, they can give that way. It's a little harder to donate. Um, because what we, I'm sure if you have children of your own, you know you don't want to give one child a can of peaches and another child right. a can of apple. <laughs> that just doesn't work out well. So we order by the truckload, mm -hmm. so and we get it that way wholesale and keep the price down. Um, however, food drives is a different uh, is a different. I'd like if mm -hmm. it's okay to have Rosemary right. talk with you about food drives. Why, sure. why don't you tell us how we do food drives? Yes, <laughs> and food drives uh, we constitute between 10 and 15 percent of what we distribute, so they're very important. And I know your organization over the past couple of years has donated almost 500 pounds of food to the right. uh, food bank, and we really appreciate that. We appreciate your support. Um, this year, we're a little down, and so we would like to encourage people to, uh, to have a food drive. Uh, we're, we're used to seeing about 350, 400,000 pounds a year in, in food drive, and right now we're about 170 pounds. Um, we would like to, to be up to 400,000 pounds by the end of the fiscal year, which is June 30th. Um, so if anybody does want to um, hold food drive, they can go to our website, uh, which is thefoodbankdayton.org, and there's a tab uh, called How to Help, and they click that tab, and there's a form to fill out, and we will deliver a barrel to uh, the location and then um, pick it up once it's full. And it seems like that's one of the important messages to really share is that people feel really generous around mm -hmm. Christmas and around Thanksgiving and no one wants to turn them away and to, to stop any of that right. but uh, certainly that the need for food is as pressing in January and February as it is in November it and December. It certainly is. And people are hungry all year round, and you're right. And people are very generous during the winter holiday season, and we do appreciate that. We do have a very large food drive in the spring, um, and I would like people to mark their calendars for the second Saturday of May, which is this year, May 11th, and it's the National Association of Letter Carriers Stamp Out Hunger Food I've Drive. Seen. It's yes. the largest single-day food drive <laughs> in the nation. Um, so we would like people to remember that. And what you would do is you would put a bag of food out by your mailbox and your letter carrier will pick it up. That all comes to the food bank. And what we do is we have volunteers that work um, for several weeks. They um, inspect every can of food that comes in, every box. 
they box it up um, into smaller boxes and then um, it's distributed to the agencies like the Hope Foundation. Okay, and mm -hmm. say, the, say the date again so people can put it on their calendars. It's always the second Saturday in May and this year it's May the 11th. Because that's something we can do without leaving home. That's correct. Uh, mm -hmm. And really make an impact and things. So um, to know that you can make a difference with a can of soup or a jar of peanut butter or something. That's right. That's really a, and one an can of feeling. food makes the difference between somebody eating and not eating. Mm -hmm. So there's no donation that's too small. And I know during one of uh, one of our uh, times when we had the barrels sitting in mm -hmm. our front lobby, um, I know there was a specific request for I think beans and rice and some things. Are there things that you prefer on an ongoing basis or are there things that you do, do not want to, to take? Uh, well, the most requested items are um, high protein items such as peanut butter, canned tuna, canned chicken, um, your canned meats. Of course, everything has to be non-perishable. Um, and then second, breakfast cereals, um, oatmeal, breakfast cereals, and then um, soups and hearty, hearty soups and stews are always welcome. And also dried beans, canned beans, pasta and pasta sauces. Can you add to that? Can That's you, a great yeah. list. You know, we're thankful for whatever we get. Anything that comes in. Yeah, right. really. Right. Mm -hmm. And if, if um, a church or an organization or a Boy Scout troop or a class wanted to do something like this, it's all they really need to do is call for the barrels or something, and that's as simple as it is for them? That's correct. Okay, can, what is a phone number mm -hmm. they can call if they want? I mean, you gave the, the but in case, you know, the, they're not maybe really using the, the <laughs> website there, is there a phone number they can call? Yes, the phone number is 461-0265, and if they would dial extension 31, that will hook them up to um, our person who handles the food drives. And if, if there is a church or an organization that has not so far set up their own food pantry or something is is there help in if a church or an organization would like to do that on an ongoing basis or set up their own food pantry is there a way that you could help them do that yes we have a program services manager and um, same phone number it's 461-0265 and her extension is 16 and what's her mm -hmm. name? To Shira Collier. Okay, mm -hmm. so they would know a, a person to talk yes. to or something. So, so if uh, if a community group or a church wants to get involved in doing something like this on an ongoing basis, um, do you do you get feedback as to to what your your services mean to the community? I mean, how how do you get your feedback and who do you get it from? We can go, we go visit agencies and we actually, uh, we can go work with Scott and distribute food on his mobile food pantry and talk to people and they are so appreciative. Um, they, it just means so much to people to be able to access this food. And you can tell when people walk into a food pantry and they know that that's available, they just automatically relax. And it's just a, it's a wonderful thing to know that this community has pulled together to help people in need. One of the things that they did at a state level that I thought was really interesting is during budget talks when there was a lot of talk of being cut, they t uh, brought paper plates in. And they were just empty paper plates and they gave them to clients and said, if you'd like to write something on them, you can. And they did and the messages were amazing. Uh, and then we delivered truckloads of those paper oh, plates uh, to mm -hmm. the state. And it made a difference. It made a difference to hear the voice. It, you know, everybody wanted to fill out. You just never know how people are going to take things. And it's always a humanity issue. We're not, we don't want to put somebody on the spot. You know, we don't want them to tell their story if they don't want to. But boy, they really liked writing their story on these paper plates. Mm -hmm. Some of the children even wanted to draw pictures, mm -hmm. you know. And some of them, you know, some of them were joyous and some of them were heartbreaking. But it got the message across loud and clear. Creative ideas, mm -hmm. and especially yes. to get to those elected officials is very critical. You. We have uh, one iconic photo of a woman that looks very much like Rosemary. She's standing in the middle of a parking lot after we have given her food and she's loaded up. She's got her bags on her arms and she's standing there and she's holding, you know, 10 pounds of potatoes with this big smile on her face. And whenever I do a presentation, I bring up this picture and she's standing there with this smile and it just shatters people's perception of who the poor are. I, and I point to it and I say, you know, this could be your next door neighbor. It's like Rosemary was saying, she could be the person on the treadmill next to you. She could be the soccer mom driving through your neighborhood. It's the, the people who are hungry are people you would not always suspect. And it's just, uh, it's an amazing thing to, to be out there. We did a, a distribution to, it was over 200 families this past Saturday. And 
my job is I, I welcome everybody. I walk down the line. I let them uh, know what types of foods they're gonna, going to be getting that day. And I just want them to feel at ease. If they're standing in line, you know, uh, these folks often are in long lines. Their whole life is spent standing in line and showing IDs and filling out forms. So my job is to kind of ease them along a little bit. And the number of people, little old ladies oftentimes, that throw their arms around me and hug me and they kind of do this to me <laughs> and they say, thank you so much for what you do. I don't know what we would have done without you. Uh, we registered over 20 new families this past Saturday and they're, they all are, they're like deer in the headlights. You know, they, they just don't know what to expect and, and we just put them at ease. I say, just go in. Do you have idea with you? Okay, well, you just go in. They'll take care of you. They'll give you a we have virtual case manager cards and the next time they come they just scan it they do an e-signature and it's it's painless mm -hmm. it really is and people are just so appreciative mm -hmm. and they they oftentimes don't look like anybody that you would expect i think one of the myths too is that we have people who say should this one should this person get food or should that person get food it's it's something to have the unique thing about Scott is um, he's one of our larger member agencies and we we really like him because he does a good job but he's mobile pantry he's the first of his kind and the nice part about this is that when people stand in line for food they're standing an hour an hour and a half and they're getting a bag of groceries about this big and you know they're getting a bag of potatoes a bag of apples and and some fresh fruits and vegetables. Greens. And greens. Don't forget the greens. That's right. Yeah, they love the greens. <laughs> nutrition. They do. It's nutrition. Yeah. But, but who does that? Who stands in line for an hour and a half to get that kind of, of meal? So, so we know that the need is there. And one of the ways that we know, there's a lot, everyone hears that unemployment, right? It's, it's getting better. It's getting better. But we use other, there are other means that we use to measure uh, where people are at. So, for example, median income right now <coughs> in the past year, $46,000. In 2007, it was 48. That was the so median income. <coughs> so people are getting back to work, but the jobs that they're getting are not paying a sustainable wage where people are still getting on their feet. Is th are things getting better? We think they are. Um, are we, do we want to see food insecurity increase? Absolutely not. However, with our mission being to acquire and distribute food through 85 member agencies, the beauty of that member agency is that they all give out food differently. So Scott's a mobile pantry. We have, uh, I love to tell the story about As As Assumption, who used to be, uh, I think she's in her 90s now, right? Still works three days a week. She's like the general one she walks through, right? <laughs> and she started it in the old <coughs> convent. And then, you know, it, we have Catholic Social Services, St. Vincent de Paul. We could go on and on uh, about Mount Zion, uh, who gets food from us. But they all distribute food differently. and. Um, and they all and they all do a good job of that. I think that's the beauty of this network is not everyone does it alike. So, and uh, let's talk more about your your mobile. Yeah. Your your mobile. We're boots on the ground. Your boots on the ground, people. <laughs> and, uh, thankfully for that. But uh, how did you get to be mobile, and and uh, where did wow. the funding come for that? And uh, generous people. It's donor, you know, just individual donors. Yeah, and primarily, donors. and we're also um, a member of the combined federal campaign. So we're an approved agency of that so as well. So if people well. want to make a donation through United Way this yeah, year? Yeah, they can, they can designate the our Hope agency. Foundation. The Hope Foundation. The Hope yeah. Foundation. Yeah. I'm not sure where we were. You, I'm a, where, where mobile, are we going we with that? Oh, mobile. mobile. You're mobile. Yeah, well, um, we had a contact um, talking about schools. We had a contact um, at Fairborn Primary School. Most people know it as Five Points Elementary. We contacted them. They contacted the families that are on reduced fee or free lunch programs and they let them know that we would be there. And so what we did was we pull the truck up, we load up the bags, we load them onto the truck, and then they actually open up the school cafeteria for us so we can go inside. People can sit inside. Either it's too hot outside or too cold or it's raining. They're inside and they're being registered in there and then they come out and we walk them to the car. The, the cool thing about what we do is really how we treat people. Um, we walk them to their car, we talk to them, and we do it every month. Like we go to Fairborn now, we've been there every, the first Saturday of every month for three years. And, you know, I, I, if I feel like a rock star when I go, they go, hey, Scott, how you doing? You know, and we walk up to them mm -hmm. and we get to know them. And, uh, you know, they know when the truck is, they know the truck is going to pull in without fail at 1045 a.m. on Saturday morning. They're already insecure, and I don't want people going, 
are they going to show up? Is this going to be the Saturday, the month that they're not going to show up? Uh, in three years, we've only had to reschedule one distribution. It's because we've got five inches of snow on a Friday night. And I personally <coughs> called every family that we served the month before. I apologized that we couldn't be there. I'm sure they weren't there either, right, but that wasn't right. the point. The point is that they don't often get treated with uh, great respect and like, like customers that are being cared for. And um, so that's kind of how it started. And then I had a contact. I did a, uh, they call it a briefing out at Wright Pat. I did a briefing and they told me about the, the CFC. And I, I'm like, I don't even know what the CFC is. So people have nursed us along and then people hear about what we're doing. Uh, a church in Heber Heights called and said, hey, we heard about what you're doing. Uh, Rosemary remembers when we used to do it right at, on corner. the street corner and a church opened up their doors, Destiny Church, and they said, hey, we would like to partner with you in this. Um, so that's really the way that it works, but we're, we are passionate about getting food to people and a lot of folks don't have cars, um, so we take it to them and the food bank is doing that. If you've never been to one of their big farmers markets at the University of Dayton when they've done it, it's fantastic. People coming together from uh, all across the community, feeding people. Um, and it's not this heavy, oh, we're helping you. You know, it's, it's like a party. You know, it's like a street fair, and we make it fun for people. And tell us about the farmer's market. I, I'm not aware of that at UD. So, so, so twice a year, we do a farmer's market, uh, once in the spring and then one during Hunger Action Month in September. And uh, the, the goal is to kind of take some pressure off of our member agencies because when fresh fruits and vegetables, I have a three to five day turnaround on that. Sometimes they never hit my floor. So you can't allow fruits and vegetables to go bad. And a lot of the smaller agencies, they don't have the room or the capacity. They're usually volunteer staff. So we help them by doing that. I'd like to go back to the funding. You know, sometimes there's a misperception. Uh, I was on, on the, on the news with Jim Motti over the holidays and he did a great job coaching me because I'm you know a little bit TV shy he, he said you know where are you getting your donations from and it's the first time I really thought about it because you know we get a lot of donations and while I love to get a big check right, right. Um, <laughs> we could talk about you know DPNL is very good to us and very good to our backpack program you know so when I get those big big checks I'm really happy with that because it makes everyone's job a little easier but that's not how we get our money. A lot of our money comes from those small checks. And I always use Sally as an example, right? If Sally tithes or gives five $25 checks and somebody in her family loses their job, now she's given three, I'm still getting one of those checks. Mm -hmm. And it makes a difference because, you know, uh, like Rosemary said, one can of food makes a difference whether somebody eats or not. And with one dollar, that we can provide eight meals with that. Uh, so by the wholesale, by the food drives, by the food we get, and by Scott, we, we partner with him on the weekends to take the fresh fruit ve and vegetables we bring them from our place. And one of the nice things about Scott is before I got there, I've been there two years, in 2008, before 2008, the Emergency Food Bank was under the umbrella of the Red Cross. 2008, it came out as its own standalone nonprofit because it was just such a great need. And um, so when I got there, we were not uh, fulfilling capacity in terms of Greene County. We had no good way to get food there, and that's where Scott came along because, you know, if you don't have an organization that's well spread, you know when you get into Yellow Springs and Greene County, it's so spread out, yes. there was no good way to do it. So when Scott got his mobile, mobile up and running, that was the best way for us to distribute food in Greene County, and yeah. we're glad. Yeah, that they show up us. with skids of food, uh, bananas, um, we had corn on the cob, we've had watermelons, uh, cantaloupes. Oh, those are great. At, yeah. Oh, I'd imagine somebody that's hungry. And, to and you know, th yeah. to see people's eyes when they go, oh my gosh, we, we get all of this, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's really heartwarming to, to see the result of that. You know, we, we couldn't carry, we're, we're good at, we're good at drawing a crowd. And then the food bank has come alongside us and they show up with their truck that's bigger than our truck and it's loaded with skids of fresh foods. Uh, bakery goods and different things and when we unload it you ought to see I mean the line of people from here out the door and and when the skids are coming off and they're going oh, we got chicken and oh, we have you know breads and it's like Christmas every potatoes day. Mm -hmm. well you know I mean as a consumer I go to a store and I buy potatoes and they're you know five dollars for right. whatever ten pounds and you know we just the food bank is such a great resource and we just get to, to give it all away. 
and people are so, they're just so appreciative. I can't stress that enough. These are not people who are coming and taking, they're coming and receiving. And uh, I just think it's, it's so much fun to be a part of it. Well, I, I think one of the important things we want to talk about, uh, and then uh, don't forget yeah. where you want us. <laughs> I was just going to thank you for having us here, because this opportunity to talk around the table really squelches a lot of the misperceptions right. about what we do. Well, and I think it was one of the saddest parts of the last election was that people who are poor, and that translates to people who are mostly hungry, or hungry a lot of the time and all, were the, uh, the scapegoats, and were the, they were the don't talk about them. And let's let's not we're not here for them, and we're not we're not here to do programming and policy for them and support for them. They're, they don't count. And so, uh, I'm just so uh, uh, honored to have Scott. You, you serve as a volunteer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, I have a day job. <laughs> and how how did you how did you start? What it, was it in you and the idea of people going hungry and all? What got you started and and, and why do you keep doing it? And that's a great question. Uh, I have a friend, um, his name's Doug Rowe, and he invited me probably 20 years ago to go out on this bus on a Saturday morning to, to go distribute groceries. And I kind of went, why would I want to do that? You know, that's, that's like, it's your thing. But what happened was over the years of just going and doing it, it got in my blood. And uh, I had a friend um, who started the Hope Foundation because she was raised in a, in a family that didn't have a lot of resources. She ended up being a single mom with a few kids and was struggling to make ends meet. And she saw the need and she started the Hope Foundation. And uh, we had uh, a facility at, on Main Street and she knew that we had this facility and she said, could we have our office for the Hope Foundation in that facility? I'm like, sure, here's a key. Do, she could use it as a base of operation. Well, about six months into it, it just kind of outgrew her capacity to lead it. Uh, she had a day job and she was very stressed out and she said, I think you should do it. And I went, no, 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 put me on your board. I know a lot of people, I can help you. And she said, no, and she kind of did this. And with a swipe <laughs> of the pen, suddenly I'm, I'm executive director, you know, of the Hope Foundation. And so I showed up at the food bank and just kind of learned the lay of the land. And it was just kind of hit the ground running. and. Uh, you know, they're, they're, the, the beautiful thing about our community is Dayton is a very generous community. And there are a lot of churches and community organizations in, uh, that are out there actually doing this day in and day out. And we're all sort of fighting the same battle. And we're all working together. There's not, we're not talking about competition here with 85 member agencies. We are all, you know, we all come, we get the resources from the food bank. And what we do is distribute it, whether, whether it's a, a, a church with 50 members that is open once a month and they take care of 15 people or like, you know, we distribute, I think it's like 15 tons a month or something like that. But um, we're all fighting the same battle and we all kind of lock arms and encourage, e encourage each other along the way. So. Do you feel the, uh, well, I know, you, Rosemary, you started earlier saying that you really could use more. So what what level of support in addition to what you have now would it mm -hmm. would it take to to meet all the needs that we have in the Miami Valley how how many more organizations or how many more pounds of food or how many more donations would it take to to assure that we're meeting our home needs you know that that we're taking care of our friends and our family mm -hmm. and our neighbors well it's not unusual for um, representatives from our member agencies to come in and say gee we're serving 30 percent more this this year than we were last year. Um, I think that our distribution went up 15 percent from last year to yeah. this year and so we keep seeing that same you know incremental increase and even though the unemployment numbers as Michelle said are getting better it's not getting better for everybody. Um, so any anytime anybody can can help us come in and volunteer, anytime anybody can have a food drive for us, anybody who can have a specially hold a special event and raise funds for us. Um, it's going to be put to use and it's going to be, it's, it's very much needed. Well, I know well, one of the most important services and programs that our partnership, Partners for Community Living, brings to this community is our shared volunteer program mm -hmm. uh, that brings in more than 5,000 hours of service every year to the people we serve with, dis with disabilities. And I imagine that volunteers are just as critical uh, mm -hmm. to you and what you do. Talk, talk about 
your volunteers, who they are, uh, how people can get mm -hmm. involved, uh, what do they do, and if they want to get involved. We couldn't do what we do without our volunteers. The volunteers are the lifeblood of this organization, and I know it's the same with our member agencies, mm -hmm. too. Um, I think most of the people who operate at the, at the agency level, uh, member agency level, are volunteers. There's very few paid staff. Um, but there's an opportunity at the food bank for anyone who wants to volunteer. Our minimum age is 14, so you do have to be 14. Um, anybody 14 to 18 must be accompanied by an adult. Um, but any, any place where, where your passion is, you can come in if you want to sort food for, from the food drives, you can do that. Um, we can send you out on one of our mobile food pantries so that you can have that experience. We have envelope stuffing. Um, if you want to uh, you know, help organize an event, um, you can do that as well. But there's a room for everybody who wants to volunteer. And about how many volunteers do you have currently? We have about 2,000 volunteers 2, 000, this year. So we're that's working. Yes. We're, we yes. have our volunteer coordinator. We anticipate being over 3,000 by the end of the year. That's amazing. We go from June to June. Our year's not the same. That's a great resource. Yes, that's it a is. great it is. resource. Mm -hmm. And uh, from 14, do you, do you uh, have an older, your oldest volunteer? Or? Well, actually, yes, we do. Our <laughs> volunteer, um, he's been with us for over 20 years. His name is Harry Franklin, and he is in his 80s. Um, I don't know exactly. He still works <laughs> about three days a week and checks in cans for integrity and for yes. uh, what their expiration mm -hmm. date is. He's a great volunteer. And is there a minimum? I mean, can people volunteer one time? Can they, do they have to sign up for weekly or monthly? Or how, how, do they, how are the hours and, and how does it meet the needs of the volunteers mm -hmm. as well that, by you can scheduling come in, and things? You can come in one day um, and do a three-hour shift on one day, or you can come in every day. Um, that's really up to you and, and where your passion is. Um, our volunteer shifts at the warehouse itself is Monday through Friday, um, 9 to noon and 1 to 4. And then our mobile food pantries are on the weekdays as well. And they, they would need to come to the food bank to fill out an application? Or? That's correct. You can also go online to thefoodbankdayton.org, and there is a tab for how to help and um, a volunteer tab and you can fill out your volunteer information there and when you submit it it will go to our volunteer coordinator and, and he will call <laughs> and he will be very happy to That's get in right. touch with you right yes. because just as with the donations i'm sure there's even though you have going to that 3000 mark you still have a need Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, they're not all there at once, right? No. They're not all there at <laughs> once. There no, it's, once. It's, no, it it's really staggered. is just a handful of people that do, mm -hmm. you know, many hands make for light work, right. and it really right. is mm -hmm. evident in things like that. We don't have a, a, a minimum age, and I love getting, like, these little six- and seven-year-old oh. kids. You know, they come with their mom. They'll call and say, can we do this? I'm like, yeah, bring your kid. And they can throw in a, a bag of rice, or I like teaching the kids how, you know, because we create a lot of cardboard, right? And so uh, I like telling the kids, you know, okay, watch this. And I just kick a box and I say, take it over and kick it over by that bin over there because we recycle all the cardboard. And the kids just, you know, they'll kick the boxes <laughs> around and suddenly they're involved. We're allowed to do that. And I take their picture. I call them the cardboard kids and I take their picture and I put it on our, on our Facebook page. And it really is a, a fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. I love going, going into the food bank and, and seeing like LexisNexis mm -hmm. or somebody that's there and they have, they'll send a group of employees and they're there giving of their time and the company is um, making a sacrifice mm -hmm. too, oftentimes oh, yeah. doing that. Oh, it's, yeah. it, Dayton really is a fantastic community to, to be involved in this type of thing. Well, we found that too yeah. with, the, with the services we provide for people with disabilities and all that. Uh, people, if you ask and if you share information and all, they're willing to help and I think the, the quality of life for, uh, for one person relates directly to the quality of life for all. And so when we do something that uh, helps someone else, it helps us build a better community. And you know, the community becomes more stable. It becomes a nicer place to live, right. and, you know, to, to be friendly and neighborly and everything. So to me, Dayton has always felt like a, a small hometown or something where people do have that. If we know mm -hmm. and we can help, we will. But, you know, tell us what we need to do. That's correct. And any time we ask, people, people come forward. And it's like all you have to do is ask. Right, and say, you know, th there's a really pressing need right, right. now, and we need, to, we need to take care of this. Um, what kind of things uh, right now, are you low on any kind of particular things, or just general donations would be great? General donations would be wonderful. Uh, like I said, we can always use high-protein items, peanut butter, canned tuna, canned chicken. 
um, breakfast cereals, those are always in high demand as well. Now we have a very small staff, so we have 17 at the food bank. So one of our favorite ways of, to have someone volunteer, and a lot of times they can't go off site, like, uh, like Scott said, we'll have a, a busload of DPNL. They make their executives come, so that's very fun to have them come over <laughs> and chuck boxes with us. <laughs> um, but so, so there's lots of ways to volunteer, but if you can't leave uh, where, where you're working, uh, there are other ways to volunteer too. Uh, because we have a small staff, we don't have a development staff. So the only way that we ask for money is through mailings. We don't hold fundraisers, and so a lot of times, third parties, that's how we get their, our money. They'll re hold a fundraiser on our behalf and or collect food. And so there's volunteer opportunities even if you cannot idea. come to the food bank. And if people, uh, other than we know the food is always necessary, but uh, money always helps as well. How, Money's a good thing. It's the, always uh, a good thing. Money <laughs> helps with, uh, with all those costs and everything, doesn't it? Um, donations, monetary donations are tax deductible. That's correct. They're tax deductible. Mm -hmm. and they would make it out to I send a letter to everybody that sends me money I have I get donations every from, thing from and I get a lot of you know there's always flack about who do you send a thank you card and who don't you know if you get a two dollar donation do you send a thank you card well yeah I do because yes. a lot of folks are on <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, fixed income and I may get that same two dollar donation in fact I know someone comes to mind <laughs> that I get one every two to three weeks from them mm -hmm. so those the, all donations yes, are, that are person, important because they're giving what they can that's, that's correct. correct I know we have a uh, when we do our end of the year campaign, we, we can rely on three or four older people who every mm -hmm. year, ten ten dollars And, that's and those thing. people are that's as critical right. to us as a person that gives a thousand because yes. we know they're giving of what they can give. That's right. You Sometimes know, they, they have their thousand, own hunger story too. You yes. know, we have people who are mm -hmm. hungry, who are now not hungry, who come back and give their time and give their money. And that's the best scenario, right, is that you help someone temporarily you know, get out of, uh, of and harm's way, and then, and then they, they come help. back and help us. So uh, it really does have those benefits and all. Do you see any um, anything in the future that's uh, going to help alleviate the, the hunger problem in this country or in our community? We know we have to do better with the economy and those kind of things, but is there anything else that anybody can do to, you know, other than government or something making changes that help us with our economies and all those kind of, you know good well, jobs and all those as i told you of course you know everyone has their passion but my heart belongs to the senior citizens and the children and one of the things that you can do it's a very small thing to do is just pay attention pay attention if you're a teacher or you bring someone to school and you know they're having problems help connect them with the resources that are here uh, same with the senior citizen. If you know that they're going hungry, help help get them connected. Once you bring them to us, we can handle it from right. there. But mm -hmm. it's the ones that I don't know about that always keep it's, me up it's at so night. Right, that uh, are, are not even having that meal, but you're able to provide mm -hmm. them That's or that backpack or something. Um, and I, I know you uh, have, uh, like we do, you have events and activities and all mm -hmm. kinds of neat things that help spread the word about what you do and what your mission is mm -hmm. and to uh, bring more people in to, to help with this very uh, very important need in our community. What, what are some of the things that are coming up as we look out of January and mm -hmm. into the rest of the year or the next few months? Right now, uh, this week that's going on is the Miami Valley Restaurant Association's Winter Restaurant Week. And for every meal that is, um, that is sold, at any of the participating restaurants, one dollar is going to be shared between three charities and the food bank is one of them. And as Michelle said, one dollar at the food bank provides food for eight meals. So that dollar really goes a long way. And the uh, restaurant week started uh, January 27th and it goes to February 3rd. How do we know what restaurants are participating? Mm -hmm. Is there a way to know? Yes, if you go to our website at uh, thefoodbankdayton.org, there is upcoming events on the home page, and if you click on that, it will take you to the Miami Valley Restaurant Association's uh, web page that will list the participating restaurants, so you can get to it from our, our well, website. Well, that's certainly something we could do, is send an email out to all of our uh, mm -hmm. email list and say, you know, look at these restaurants. We know you go out for lunch right. and dinner, so please do that this week. Right, and it's and very that would popular. Be an easy way for someone that's going out to eat anyway. Anyway, that's correct. Great. Right. Okay, so there's the restaurants. Right. So and then at the end of the month, the end of February, February 24th, um, is the Day of Caring uh, Pancake Brunches. And the Day of Caring is an organization that raises money for hunger and homelessness. And the food bank is a major recipient of their funding. And there are almost 60 sites 
on February 24th that are going to be holding pancake breakfasts. And you can also access those um, sites from our website homepage. Um, also, the night of February 24th at Jilly's Nightclub at 7.30 p.m., there is a great music festival going on. Uh, 25 Dayton musicians are going to be performing The Last Waltz live and there's a five dollar admission charge and the proceeds come to the food bank. Now what is The Last Wall? Mm -hmm. It is the um, documentary film that was made of the band's last performance. Okay, mm -hmm. so that would really be interesting yes. for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. so that, and again, that's the evening of February 24th. 24th, that's correct. Okay, so it's February is an important month for you. It is, it's an active month. Show mm -hmm. your heart, it's mm -hmm. Valentine's that's month. Right. So you've been, uh, Show your big heart and go out mm -hmm. and uh, support some of these events or anything. But those are things we've heard of, but I think a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, probably maybe have thought about going to Pancake, but you just don't think of where the money is going and what, right. what that's doing. Mm -hmm. So those are ways that we all can help in some way. We, we don't do as much as Scott does out there with his, with his mobile truck and everything. You know, everybody, but, everybody does their part. You know, we, the, the thing is we can, we can service 300 families in just a couple of hours. You know, people think it's this monumental task. In some regards, I guess it is. But, you know, Rosemary's been out there, Michelle's been out there, and when you're serving people, the time flies, and it's really, it's not as big of a daunting task as, as well, it may I think may it's sound. monumental on the end of people who receive the food because it makes a difference mm -hmm. in their lives. That's what sure. makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there, there's where it's monumental that you're, that you're doing that and that uh, you're getting pe people through n this day and into the next and everything. Right. So how critical. Uh, we're getting close. The hour goes so quickly and everything. Uh, is there anything that we haven't talked about that you want to share or do you want to give phone numbers and things like that again so that we can make sure that people, they say, oh, I heard that and I want to make sure I go to that or I want to make sure that, you know, let's go get a barrel this week mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and have our scout group or our church youth group or somebody fill that barrel for us or something. Mm -hmm. what, what in a couple of minutes can we tell people again and, you know, why it's so critical. Right. Uh, what I would like people to do is to visit our website at thefoodbankdayton.org. There's a lot of information on um, hunger statistics and ways to help. And uh, our phone number again is 4610265. You can like us on Facebook too. Like yeah, us on Facebook. Right. That's, an, that's, that's a good, important thing. Everybody's trying to build those friends they on are. Facebook. They yes. are. It's are a good too. way to get and word. Yeah. Like, like the food bank like and like on. partners for community living. That's right. <laughs> that's the goal for tonight is uh, to like us on uh, Facebook. But that's a good place for people to go and mm -hmm. see more of the stories and, you know, really keep in touch with what, with what mm -hmm. we're doing on a daily basis and all. And so many people like that as a, as a way of communication. So it, it is critical in everything. We'd like to tell you thank you for having us here. The more we get to tell our story, the more people hear, you know, and, and, and the better the understanding. And that's, I think that's what we want to do, you know, is we want to share. Uh, there, there are so many good things going on in this community, but there are so many needs. Mm -hmm. And to be able to bring us all together. And I urge everyone who's watching, if you've watched us for the first time with this program, or if you've been with us over the many years, um, make it a goal this year, make it a resolution. It's not too late to make a, a resolution for 2013. That sometime during 2013 or all during 2013, you're going to make a difference to end hunger or to, to at least alleviate hunger for the children in our community, for this elderly in our community, for the moms and dads in our community, for the homeless in our community. Um, give a can of soup, give $10, Give of yourself as a volunteer. Give so that others will face a day where they don't have to worry about hunger for at least that day. Share what you have. Make us a better community. Uh, and we'll all be better for it. Uh, please do call the food bank. If you do have any questions and did not get their uh, phone number, call us at 898-3655. And again, also remember the wonderful people we serve at Partners for Community Living, people with developmental disabilities, and uh, th their needs for safe and nurturing homes in the community. And uh, where would people who are hungry and people who need homes be if it were not for this community that it opens its heart and opens its doors to people in need? And there's no better service that any of us can do. And little by little, community by community, we can do something about those 50 million people that are going to bed hungry tonight. Um, join us again for another edition of uh, Partners for Community Living. 
we are so grateful that uh, we had people like Rosemary and Scott and Michelle to take time out of their schedules to come and share what makes this one of the greatest communities in Ohio. Thank you, and again, we'll look forward to another wonderful evening spent with you at Partners for Community Living.